Well, hello, guys. Hello, hello. Today, tonight, on this live stream is a going to be a really epic. It might be a little long. I encourage you guys, please, to leave comments and ask questions. We are going to go step by step on the process of building a schoolie. Uh, I mean, as far as how to buy a bus, how to get insurance, gutting it, all the way to the process of finishing it, and possibly going over some options that you may or may not have known about. And if you see in the back, Shanti's hanging out on the bed, watching a movie. Erica's out, so it's just me tonight. And by the way, my name is Matt Stone. This is our second bus that we've converted. I've helped other people convert buses and built full vans. And uh, so I have a little bit of knowledge in it. And hopefully, because I get asked a lot of the same questions all the time of how do I buy a bus, how do I insure it, all these basic kind of questions. I'm going to answer them here on this live stream for you guys to have the knowledge. And uh, if you hear some farting noises, that's also Shanti in the back getting my attention. Um, hey, baby. I'm talking on the camera. You want to come say hi? Okay, you want to come say hi real quick? Come say hi when you're ready. So I have a, uh, a little bullet point list over here. I might have to get Shanti a snack here in a second, so uh, <laughs> might have a little pause on that. But uh, regardless, guys, um, hey, what's up, James? Story? Story is also another amazing guy. He's built a lot of buses and... Has built some of the most beautiful buses I've ever seen in my life. Story down there. He's in the comments. And so to start off, guys, we're going to start by talking about how to buy a bus and the titling process and the insurance of it, too. <laughs> Story, I'll get you a snack. I'll let you sleep on the couch and give you a snack there. Wink, wink. Inside joke from one of our previous live streams. <laughs> um, so, guys, if you are looking to buy a bus... And you don't know where you're going to find one. Um, one. There's two main places that I looked. And one of them was Facebook Marketplace. But that can be a little sketchy. You don't really know exactly what you're getting. I mean, you can research the motor, transmission, the type of bus, and everything. Want to come say hi? Here. But my preferred way of doing it is actually... Well, this is Shanti. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> My preferred way of doing it, which we did for this I bus, like she likes to talk on a mic, is uh, is I going like to AAA buses. Okay, I'm sure everybody loves hearing you. What's up, Chandler? You're the man. So, uh, so, uh, tell him something good. Tootie. Tootie. Tootie is her message for the day. Tootie Woody. Okay, baby. Can you go back to the bed and watch your movie? Why? Because I'm talking about some important stuff here, okay? Okay. Okay, bud. Okay. You want an apple? Here, baby. Apple. Okay, I give it to you. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. Anyways, so. Hey, what's up? Glad you guys are tuning in. So, we bought this bus from AAA Buses out of Phoenix. They're really well known in the school community. A lot of people have bought their buses from AAA Bus. And they kind of go through the motor. They vet the transmission. They vet the motor. And they vet the bus to make sure that it is the best that it can be now there's no guarantee you're still buying a used vehicle but they go through and when i was when i first showed up there for the very first time um here is actually a photo of this that is at triple a buses that's that's our bus that we're currently in when we first got it and he walked through the whole bus with us made it very easy to make the decision went over all the different components the benefits the downsides and so we got this bus and we spent 15000 on it. So we spent a little bit more than what I was finding on Facebook Marketplace with private users, about five grand more. But in our last bus, our transmission blew out and that was five grand right there. And we got that from a private owner. That person didn't do anything wrong with it. They were not even aware. Neither were we. There was no signs of it, but it happened, you know. So we spent a little bit more to save a little bit more later on. Now, the next thing you're going to have to do is get insurance on it. And 
insurance is a huge question that a lot of people who don't know how to get insurance on their bus, it's a very big deal and it's very hard to get. You can't just call up Geico or Progressive and say, hey, I got this school bus, you know, give me some insurance on it. They won't do it because at the time when you first buy it, what you need insurance when you get it so you can travel and bring it to wherever you're going to build it, it's titled as a bus. So there was one workaround that we got. I got a biz, I got a uh, company insurance on the first bus because I didn't know about this hack that I'm about to tell you about. And that worked to get us by. And then we later on found the perfect person who writes really great policies for schoolies. And her name is Kelly Newsom. I will uh, put this in the comments in a little bit. And her phone number is 352-326 nine three zero zero kelly newsome and she will write you a policy no matter where you're at in the country she's based out of florida but she does a really good job so if you call them they'll get you insurance on your bus while you're building it and then when you're done with the build you've transferred your title to a recreational vehicle which i'm about to go over and everything is done she will then write you a new policy on your actual schoolie and they have great full coverage insurance. We pay more than what some people pay, um, but we actually have like legit insurance for it. One of the things you really gotta be careful of is if you insure your bus, but you are kinda like, uh, you know, you maybe kinda like sneakily don't put something in there. Well, if you ever get in an accident or something ever happens where you need to claim your insurance, they'll deny your claim because like, well, you lied when you were applying for the process. so. They just won't, if you have insurance, just if you get pulled over from a cop, say you have it. But if you actually need it, it won't work. So it's important to get the right kind of insurance and be honest when you're doing it or else there's no use of having it anyways. We have full coverage in our bus. We pay $186 a month for it, which is kind of expensive, but compared to some other things I've seen, but we truly have full coverage. If we get in an accident, all of our belongings here are covered. Uh, I mean, of course, they couldn't replace the bus, but they could compensate us for totaling the bus if it happened or would pay for damages. Now moving on to titling a school bus. This can be a very headache process because you are dealing with your local DMV. In Florida, it seems or it is easy, but nobody, if you just walk into the DMV and ask, hey, how do I take the school bus that I'm trying to renovate into an RV, which is the way you should say it when you go in, um, They'll have no idea what they'll have no idea. They'll think that you have to like bring it to get it uh, looked at by some salvage company and all this other different kind of stuff. But in Florida, all you need is form TL thirteen. It's a construction form. You just write in there that you've in, that you've added one ten electric um, plumbing or propane to your rig, and then they will transfer the title. And you also need to get your bus weighed from a certified scale like a cat scale they have those at loves gas stations a lot you know things like that in other states um, like i know in mississippi the bus cannot be yellow if the bus is yellow they won't transfer the title um, and there's a lot of these other little things you just have to find the right person in your local dmv area um, to talk to typically that person is going to be the head up you know so if you call the dmv and they don't know what you're talking about and they transfer you to somebody else who might know that's the person you want to try to keep talking to the person that the other dmv people call when they don't know so that's a tip for you there but you need to transfer your title because if you don't once again if you don't title this as an rv or a recreational vehicle or whatever and you get in an accident or something happens, we have some friends, some really good friends of ours, they had a box truck, they did not transfer the title into something different like a recreational vehicle, they had insurance on it, and their their box truck got hit by lightning, completely destroyed the whole rig, but because they didn't transfer the title, the insurance did not accept their claim and they didn't pay for anything because they were like, well, you weren't really truthful in the process of applying for the insurance. So let's move on, guys. This could be a long stream. I'm going to try to go through this. That's kind of more the technical aspects of things as far as getting your bus legal. Now, the next part of this is once you have your bus, 
the insurance is taken care of. Um, hey, Robin. Yeah, I got to say, uh, she's Robin said, here, actually, I got this fancy thing on the live stream. Let me show you guys. Boom. Everybody can see everybody's chat on screen, although you can see it to the right anyways, but it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, Robin said, way cool learned experience experience is outstanding uh, that's so true this is all learned experience for sure just from me trial and error um now the next part of this guys once you get your bus you're going to move on to gutting your bus and so here's of course uh our bus let me move on to the next photo here and so when you have your seats installed everything is still stock you have to uh first before removing everything, and I'm looking over here at this monitor because these are my notes to make sure I don't forget anything. Before removing everything from the bus, figure out how you're going to build it. So a lot of people, for instance, they don't take the ceiling down. They just leave the school bus ceiling. For one, that saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of cost because like, I had to put wood all up on this whole entire ceiling. And wood right now is very expensive. Plus insulating it, plus framing it. So all these different things. So you have to very in the very beginning understand how deep are you going to go in your build how much do you need to insulate your schoolie so we insulate it very heavily so we took everything off okay so just figure that out if you have the money to do it i would definitely suggest it because the metal on these buses gets super hot so it's best to insulate the best as possible now what are you going to keep versus what are you going to uh, get rid of as far as what's stock in the school bus. So step one would be taking out the seats. Obviously, you want all those seats gone that you see in that picture, and that's easy. You just take out the bolts, and they come right out. Super easy. But you do have to plan on what you're going to do with those chairs. So plan on having a truck or a trailer to take them to a dump, or if you want to spend the time and effort, you can list them on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or whatever and try to sell them and recoup some of your money. I don't think too many people are buying school bus seats. So that's why we didn't, but uh, we just took them to the dump. And then once your seats are out, it's time to remove the floors, which no matter how much you're going to build in your bus, I would definitely suggest taking the floors out, getting them all the way down to the bare metal. Because what the schoolie floors are, if you don't know, is this rubber sheet that's on top. Then you have some plywood. And then you have your metal floor. That's like literally just the metal of the bus. And what happens a lot of times is that from the old school bus windows or whatever, there's leaks. And those leaks get underneath that subfloor, the original subfloor of the bus. And even if your bus looks amazing, like there's no way there could be any rust. If you get that floor up, I guarantee you there's usually rust. We had some in this bus and it came from Arizona. Like super, super dry state. You know, so there wasn't a lot, luckily. There's just a little bit. And um, once you remove those floors, which I'll tell you guys, it is really hard to remove the floors. It's a lot of grunt work, but you super want to do it. Um, it's going to save you down the line because, for instance, our wheel wells in the back, behind the wheel wells is where all the rust was. And that was because when, we were, when the bus was driving, it would spit up water and it would get up inside the wheel wells and then into the flooring of the bus. And that's where the rust was. Treating the rust is really easy. You just take a grinder with a wire wheel, brush it all off, and then treat that rust with a rust treatment. Um, you find that at any Home Depot. And then the next part of it is once you uh, have treated all the rust, I use something called Zap Tape. Um, I have a video of it. Not here, though. Um, but it's just a tape, like a flex seal tape, pretty much. You could use that as well. Once you take your seats out and all the screws and everything, there's going to be all these little holes throughout your floor. You need to seal those up. And then with some kind of tape, or some people use pennies and silicone and just cover the holes with. But we used zap tape, which is meant for residential housing, or flex tape would work too. And then once that is done, then you are ready to paint your floors with Rust-Oleum. And what that does is it just prevents any rust in the future if you do have a leak. Now, moving on. I'm looking at the time, guys. Try not to take forever. I won't be super detailed. And uh, sometimes I've been known to mansplain too much. So 
if you guys are ready to move on, let me know. Um, James said they also wash the floors by pouring a bucket and spraying it out. Big pry bar for the wood. The longer the better. That is so true story. Uh, removing the floors, the wood floors here, or the plywood that's underneath the rubber. I had like a six foot crowbar because otherwise those things were not coming out. And bluebird buses are like, they put them together so well, it is so hard to take them apart. And I'm actually going to go over the differences between like a Thomas build and a bluebird here pretty soon um, and the differences in that. But for sure, a long crowbar helps with that. Um, another question to ask is, or actually the next thing, once you have your floors done, you can go ahead and, I mean, none of this is super in order. This is just the way that I did it and the way that worked really well for me. So take that into consideration as well. But it's time to uh, remove the walls and ceilings if you're going to do that. And Bluebirds, Bluebird buses, which I've had a Thomas bus with an International. This bus is a Bluebird with a Cummins 8.3 motor in it and Allison transmission in both. This bus, not talking about power-wise and the performance of the motor, just driving it. And this bus is longer than our last bus. It drives better. So I prefer uh, Bluebird now. Because before I was like, what's what's the difference? You know, they're all buses. But Bluebird, I didn't know this at first, but Bluebird has their own factory. They manufacture their own frames. Like everything that's in a Bluebird bus is like manufactured by, by Bluebird where um, – Thomas and International, still great buses, don't get me wrong, but uh, not all their parts are specifically made for a school bus, um, and it affects the drive quality a little bit. Um, I definitely notice it in our bus, but that's just my own personal preference. But when you go to gut a Bluebird bus, everything is riveted. I mean, it is rivets like crazy, and the way you get out rivets is you need an air hammer, and you just got to chisel them out. You could do it with a drill, but I mean, there's thousands of rivets that you got to take out just on the inside if you're going to remove your ceiling. Whereas a Thomas or an International, most of the time they're just screws, which those can be just as hard too. You know, if they're rusty and you strip a screw, you're going to have to air hammer it or grind it out anyways. And that can be a real pain. At least the rivets are consistent as far as how you remove them. There's no hiccups, but that can save you some time too. But we did a lot of air hammering, getting rivets out of our ceiling and our walls. So once you get the ceiling and the walls taken out, the bus is pretty much got it. Actually, you know what? I have this picture here just sitting here. I forgot to move it on. There's the gutting process. Uh, so you can see in this photo, the floors are still in. We removed the walls and we we're starting on the ceiling. Uh, we actually did do the floors last. It doesn't really matter how which way you got it. Um, we did do a roof raise on our bus so that's why you see the huge gaps on the side we took out all the windows we did a roof raise on the bus um, did new sheet metal and all that kind of stuff but this picture is just showing it to you completely gut it and um, and the next question to ask now talking about the roof raise are you keeping your bus windows that's a, another thing to ask yourself um, there's pros and cons if you keep all the bus windows then you just got to expect you can insulate as much as you want, but they're super, super drafty. So no matter how much insulation you have in your bus, the bus windows will let in air like crazy and you know, you can only do so much. So that's why we decided to take them out. Although they look cool and there's tons of light, we just added a lot more windows in. And also another thing too, keeping the bus windows, it can be hard to build around them. A lot of people will take a few out, which we'll talk about here in a second and how to cover those. Um, but another thing with the windows, if you're planning to keep them before you start building anything in your bus, you need to be inside your bus during a super heavy rainstorm or have somebody on the outside, like really blast your windows with a hose because you want to make sure that your windows don't have any leaks. If they do have a leak, the process of that is pretty easy. The bus windows, you just take out a few screws and then it's held in with caulking. So you just push that window out, clean off all the old caulking, and just re-caulk with, uh, with like some kind of window caulking. And caulking kind of holds it in as well as seals it, and then you just put those screws back in. It's really easy. It wouldn't take too long to do a few of them. If you did all of them, well, that would take a while, but you still could. I, have, I know a friend who did that. Um, so that's the pros and cons of having a bus window or not. And now you can see in this photo... This bus at this point is completely gutted. The ceiling's gone. The uh, 
the walls are gone of course and there's one thing I want to point out right here I'm gonna make this bigger and uh, like a lot bigger so really point this out if you notice I'm gonna use my hand here let's see this one this little side wall right here that you see you're like oh that looks like it's still a wall but if you have a bus that has that don't remove it it's actually structural because you have all your metal frames going up as you can see that picture the metal frames are coming up and over they're all one piece well in this photo they're not because we cut them for the roof raise but they're all one piece before you do roof raise and that little floor panel right there is actually horizontally holding all those together so um, I almost made the mistake of removing them and then I read something that said don't because they are actually structural and it totally makes sense now the next photo here is with the floors completely prepped um, with the tape and the nice paint that was like the first time in, in this bus that I was like oh man this thing's looking good now um, really rewarding to start seeing something actually like look finished although it gets covered anyways hey baby hold on do you need something what do you need more apple or are you done no. here you can, you can just set it down next to you I'll get it in a minute all right so guys the next part is going to be floor prep which we already talked about in your subfloors now um, I kind of did it a little backwards, but that's all good. And once you get your floors to this point that you see in this picture here, the nice white gloss or whatever color you do, it's just a Rust-Oleum paint that seals or Rust-Oleum is cheap and works really great or any kind of oil-based enamel paint that's specifically for metal. It's just to prevent rust in the future mainly. And then the next part of this, guys, is it's time to frame your subfloors. There's a lot of different ways of doing this. I've seen a lot of people do it different ways. I think the most popular way I've seen it. One second. Yeah, Shanti. Okay. She wants me to come get her apple that she just got done eating. Pause. Anyways, thank you guys for holding on. Um, the next part of this process, once your floors get to this point, like I was saying, is to frame them, get them ready for your subfloors. This is not what we did, but this is something that I probably would have done if I knew about it. Um, please stop. Sorry, guys. Um, trying to live stream with a three-year-old can be a challenge. <laughs> Um, so anyways, you're going to use furring strips that are like three-quarter inch furring strips. I'll go to the slide of our subfloors being framed out. Um, I'll go back to that in a second. So here is uh, how we framed out our floors. We used two-by-fours and laid them on their sides to frame out our floors. And we did everything 16 on center to make it easy when I was actually installing the subfloor. But what I've also seen a lot of people do is they'll use furring strips that are three quarter inch thick by like two inches wide or one inch wide, something like that. And they will frame the floors with that and then use um, foam board to fill the gaps. And um, as an example, this is what I wrote here. Daddy. Lay each furring strip at a minimum of 24 inches apart. Use liquid nails and screws to screw down to fasten the furring strips and then fill the gaps with foam board. please come here we have a visitor and so uh so then you have all these gaps so imagine what you see in that picture you just fill that with foam board we used uh spray foam which these are called froth packs you can get them at Lowe's, but they are super expensive right now so i would recommend just hiring somebody to do it it's cheaper actually than going and buying the kits yourself and um and it's spray foam so you can see in that picture there we did closed cell spray foam insulation on the floor for a few reasons one it's better insulation and secondly it waterproofs your floor so any gaps and any other holes that you might have missed or that i might have missed on securing or 
taping off the floor and everything is now sealed because of that spray foam. Oh, did you bring me that sticker? Thank you very much. This needs to go on the bus at some point. But uh, hey, there you go. Shout to YouTube. Thank you, Shanti. And now, guys, once you're, uh, when your flooring is done and uh, or your insulation and framing is done, then you're going to want to use at least a minimum of, of three quarter inch plywood to lay down on your subfloors. So once you do that, you're going to have a nice flat surface to walk on. I'm telling you, don't use half inch. Don't try to cheap it out. Use three quarter inch or thicker plywood for your subfloor. Um, over time, it, you'll thank yourself for doing that and spending a little extra money right now. Um, so then nextly or next part of this you can start framing out your walls what i did is i just took two by fours or two by threes and just framed the metal studs that were already in the bus you can see that in this picture here i'll make it a little bigger and move it around so you can see it so you can see those two by fours coming up right i mean i obviously can't go in front of the picture but the two by fours are going up the metal studs and then I have a bunch of furring strips going along the ceiling of the bus. So let me rewind here a few pictures back. And this is how you will accomplish the bend of the ceiling. If you want to make that nice natural curved ceiling like your bus already has, you're going to take furring strips and then do something called relief cuts where you cut little, little cuts, but you're not going all the way through the wood. And then that will bend, it will allow the wood to actually bend. If you're more curious on this, go to our Instagram because I did a ton of stories while doing our bus build. So it's all like kind of live, just little tips and stuff like that. It could be super helpful as well. Um, and then for us, the next thing we did. Oh, well, I might have to redo the slide. But anyways, the next thing we did, guys, was we laid our finished floors right after we did the subfloors. Um, we laid our finished floors first before building anything. So later on, we weren't doing a million cuts to match each little angle that we did. So, and it's also makes it easier just to build everything right on top of those floors rather than, oh, potty break, um, uh, rather than having to, uh, notch everything around. Okay. So this is like, man, I'm almost up on my time guys. I've been talking for a while. We're only on the floors. Um, next part of it, and also the kind of flooring that we use is LB, LVP, Luxury Vinyl Plank Flooring. It's the best flooring to use hands down inside of a school bus because of all the different temperatures you're going to be in. Uh, hardwood floors, if it's not kept at a certain temperature, it will expand and move around, and you don't want that in your bus. I know some people have done it, and they've gotten away with it, but for the most part, people who have used hardwood floors you're in a really hot environment, really hot and dry, then you go to a cold and wet environment, then they just buckle because they expand. Um, like I said, guys, any questions you have, as I'm just rambling forever right now, just feel free to ask. And um, so let me see. Next part of this, guys. Next part, next part. Let me get back to my little menu here. The next part of this, guys, is uh, going to be insulating everything. On our bus, we used, uh, I got to reset this little slideshow right here. It kind of messed up on me for some reason. But the, the t we did a couple different kinds of insulation because spray foam insulation um, is so expensive right now. And even hiring somebody was really hard to do because, um, like, ch because of the new tax laws for importing chemicals and other kind of merchandise like if someone tries to import something from china there's a big tax on it now the tariffs so it became really hard to get spray foam and so a lot of spray foam companies just didn't have any i called a bunch and that's why spray foam at lowe's was literally double the price or more than double the price when i built my first bus so that was kind of a bummer but it is what it is so on our ceiling here i'm trying to uh get this slideshow back up so I can show you. Um, there we go. Let me just hop over a few more of these. Sweet. Um, hold on, let me get this. One second, baby. 
I knew the potty break was going to be rough, guys. I knew it was going to be rough. She'd be calling me. Um, yeah, I can come. Um, here, sorry, I'm going to put on our intro countdown. Give me one minute. I'll be right back. At least it's some music to listen to. <laughs> from the potty break Shanti needs to wash her hands and uh why why do you need to wash your hands yeah cause you went number two there you go why I don't, uh, I don't want to wash my hands okay tell everybody I don't want to wash my hands she doesn't want to wash her hands but she went poo poo so hmm do you have anything to say about that? Here, come hang with me, Shanti. You can see yourself on camera. Game on. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, seek life elsewhere. Uh, cool. Hey, Destiny, what's up? Uh, yeah, absolutely. She said, Des seek life elsewhere. Destiny said, haha, kids plus live stream equals organized chaos. Absolutely true. Um, anyways, we're doing it guys. We are doing it. Thanks for hanging in there. Um, so installations, you can see from this picture right here that we did foam board installation on the ceiling and then we did uh, spray foam on the walls and spray foam on the floors. It's just, it was going to be way too expensive to do spray foam on the whole thing. Um, you can see there that's a part of our ceiling going up and now guys the next part of this is your framing all that stuff's done so we're we're framed up you got your framing on your ceiling you've insulated and the next part of this guys is going to be your electrical and solar system because before you put your roof on you're going to need to bolt through your solar panels on top you're going to need to cut out areas for your max fan like you can see in that picture there's a max fan right in the middle you need to cut that out and install that max fan before you put on your ceiling, before you start building. As well as you need to run wiring for your solar system, which, by the way, if you are curious about our solar system setup, we have 2,600 watts of solar. It's an amazing system. We have a whole video on our YouTube channel just about our solar system if you're trying to do it yourself as well. All the components, everything is listed on there, and I go over what they do. So... You need to install everything that's going to go on your roof needs to be on your roof before you put your ceiling on. Thanks, babe. <laughs> you want to wear my hat? Wear it on camera. There you go. Show everybody how cool you are. And, uh, but then the next step, guys, you have your framing. Before you start building anything else, you need to figure out where your electrical system is going to go. And then you need to start running wires. And that includes your 12 volt lights your 110, all that stuff needs to be ran before you start building your walls, as well as plumbing. So plumbing needs to get done at this point as well. And when I first, did, when I did my first bus, I was really afraid to do plumbing. So I like, I waited to the very end and uh, I ran everything underneath the bus, which was a mistake. The pipes would freeze when we were in freezing temperatures. Um, so anyways, that's something to keep in mind when you get your framing and all that stuff done. Um, well, now we're getting on more what? pictures. She loves looking at herself in this. Oh, here, put the headphones on. Yeah, put the headphones on. You can, you can listen to me talk, okay? Okay. Everybody loves listening to me talk. 
<laughs> Not really, just myself. But, uh... Hi. Say hello. Hello. Awesome, dude. <laughs> awesome, dude. Okay, you'll get to talk in these later. So her treat for being good during the live stream is that she gets to talk in the microphone with the headphones on later when we're done. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You guys are all here for Shanti for sure. I don't doubt it at all. Um, so yeah, framing's done, doing plumbing and electrical. That all has to get figured out. Where are you going to put your kitchen? Where are you going to need an outlet in your bedroom? Are you going to have a desk? What kind of power are you going to run to your desk? Uh, where are you going to have your lights? Um, that's These are all decisions that need to be made before you start really building anything in your bus. A lot of planning, but if you plan really good, then your bus will come out nice because you'll know where to build everything and you'll be able to plan everything out really correctly. Um, so now from here, guys, you got all this kind of hard stuff done, right? Um, oh, there we go. Back to the headphones. We got all the hard stuff done, and... Now it's time for the more of the tedious work, the carpentry, actually building things, installing your water tanks. Where are they going to go? We chose to put ours. Awesome tootie. Awesome tootie. <laughs> awesome tootie. <laughs> um, we put our water tanks underneath our bed. Awesome tootie. <laughs> okay. She can hear me through the headphones. Oh, now she can't. Hey, if you you can talk on the microphone a bunch later on. Okay, right now I'm trying to talk to people out there. Uh, my microphone. <laughs> Robin, that's totally right. She said, "Hey, Shanti, great dad skills to do the live stream." Awesome, Tuli. <laughs> story, she is a diva. Here, don't hang on that, baby. Why? That's not. It's not really strong. Okay. Uh, so. Awesome Tuli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome Tuli. <laughs> All right, Shanti. For right now, that's enough. Okay. If you keep doing that, you're just gonna have to go back into the bed. Okay. You can sit up here and be quiet, and then later on you can talk like crazy. Okay. Okay. Deal. Fist pound. Finger touch? What? What's that? Finger touch? Finger touch? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and Destiny, I'm glad I could help you out figuring out what you need for your solar system. Oh, man. Bedtime, everybody. Sorry, this has become a kid's show now. Um, so Destiny said, I'm in the phase right now, and I feel like the decision fatigue is so real. She said, but I know when I'm through the planning and wiring, the finished product will be way better. And that's so right. I mean, it's it seems overwhelming, and it definitely can be. You have a lot of decisions to make when you're in the planning stage of where things are going to go, your layout. Um, I used a program called SketchUp, which is free. Um, it's kind of hard to learn how to use, but it's not bad. Um, it took me probably like... A good like two or three hours of learning just to be able to really use it but i did the whole entire bus in sketchup so i knew the layout i knew where plumbing was to go so making these decisions like okay my kitchen is in the front as well as my living space i we chose to go two four six eight nine puck lights just up here in the front of the bus gives plenty of light and um and it's on a dimmer so yeah, and Story said it's totally real. It happens to everyone. That is super true. It really does happen to everybody because there's a lot of decisions to be made. But once you get the wiring, you just have an idea of where things are going to go. Once again, what are you doing, baby? I'm just going to go to the movie. Okay. She's going back to her movie. Um, so once you have everything planned out and your wiring's in, then you can really start building. And the nice thing, too, is that nothing has to be exactly perfect. So with these, when I wired the puck lights in, I just left like an extra couple feet of wire to make sure that I can compensate for where they really were going to go. I had an idea of where they're going to go, but I left extra wire so I can pull that wire wherever it was actually needed. So that's a little tip. Um, 
and yeah yeah story is totally right james writes even skilled builders get blocked it's so true because it's hard to figure out what layout is going to suit you best until you're actually in it and that's why the second bus is like so comfortable for us because we learned from our last one um if anybody's curious of like why we chose to design our kitchen this way we have a video on that too just trying to give resources for people who are doing this to try to help them out because we definitely used all the resources we could find as well um, so now figure out where you want your water tanks run your hot and cold water lines and talking about water there's a couple different parts you have your water tanks a hot water heater then you have your plumbing pipes that are going to your sink and your shower but then you have your drain pipes when do you do your drain pipes you do those pretty much last so we built the whole bus and installed well not the whole bus we got everything kind of built where it was going to go ran all of our drain pipes down underneath the bus and then installed our gray tank going up into it our gray slash back black because we have a compost toilet and so the urine goes into the same tank as our shower and sink but that's a whole nother topic so you run the drain lines from your sink and your shower and then figure out where all that's going to go and then mount the tank so because the drain pipes have to come down they have to go underneath the bus they have to stick down like this and you got to drill holes in your tank and then lift your tank and like get those tubes in there or to get the piping in there when you lift it up. So that's how you're going to do your drain pipes. It's not hard, but it's definitely kind of a pain. You just got to lift these tanks up, use all your strength. Um, and then, so that's kind of a little bit further down the line and where we're at. Now we're kind of the part where you start building your walls and your ceilings. Um, so destiny asks seek life adventure, um, or I'm sorry, seek life elsewhere she said, did you install the fresh water at the end too? And no, that was in the beginning. I'll explain that in a second. And, she, and then she asked, or just the gray, um, I'll put the chat on screen just in case someone's not seeing it on the side. So yeah, you're going to install your fresh tank as one of the first things you do depending on where you're going to have it really you can wait later on to do the tank you just need to run all the pex piping through your walls or wherever they're going to go to get to your sink and to your shower and then they need to be coming out wherever your tank is your fresh tank is going to go we found a place underneath our bed in the back to install our 200 gallons of water and then from there we ran all the pipes out did all the plumbing and everything like that uh, which I do, uh, Destiny, have a full video on our plumbing system, like even how to actually connect the pipe and everything like that, and a full walkthrough. So if you're curious on that, on how it's set up, you can go watch that video too. But yes, that was in the beginning, and then I just ran all the pipes from there. So I knew where our bed was going to go. I knew where the tanks were going to go. I built a structure around the tanks to make sure they stay put, and then ran all the plumbing out uh, pretty early on in the build. Um yeah, totally. I would definitely check out that video. It'll, it'll answer a lot of questions that you might have. Um, and so then you're kind of building walls up. We, which I regret, I'll share this tip with you. I regret I built all the cabinets and everything first and then did our walls. I really wish I would have just done the walls all the way and then built everything more like a standard home would. Uh, my reasoning behind that is that I didn't do that is because for one to use less material and two and also save some weight and two I didn't know exactly where everything was going to fit and where everything was going to go. Um, he's had a he's had to his how to's are great. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Sorry. I had to re my reading is uh, but I've gotten better over time anyways. Um, and then our ceiling. Um, you can see kind of this picture here of that. We did this really cool ceiling. Uh, you can see we used a backing board to actually cover everything. And then we put the wood slats over that backing board. So you didn't have any gaps happen in your ceiling because this is real wood. So temperature change, of course, I can, or I can already point out points, points where the wood has changed. So that backing board allowed it to never show just a gap behind the wood if it ever expanded. So there's a couple different ways you can do your ceiling. One of them is using um, tongue and groove is a really popular way. A lot of people do slats 
to cover their ceiling because if you're running them vertically like this down the bus, it's very easy to make the curve. Another way that people do their ceilings is they get really thin, like eighth inch um, backing board, something like, or like a door skin board. They're really, it's really thin plywood and you can kind of push that up and make the bend. That's what we did in our first bus. And guys, I would not recommend it. It's the cheapest way, but man, what a pain. <laughs> I will never do that kind of ceiling again because yeah, it was cheaper for sure. But because you got one piece covers a huge surface area, but to get it to actually make that bend, to make the curve, make it all stay, it did stay, but dude, it was such a pain and it really did not look good in some of the gaps. Um, so I would definitely suggest doing some kind of planks. We on our ceiling, this could be a, a cost saving hack for somebody if you have a table saw is our whole ceiling like you see here on this picture you can't really see it in the live stream but is all two by fours that we took to a table saw so each two by four i'd get about four slats bringing the cost down to about two dollars and something cents per slat um oh yeah okay so uh destiny seek life elsewhere she said ha too late i'm already doing the thin panels not looking forward to the install, but furring strips is already set up for it. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, it It's definitely, it's not too hard, but it's kind of a pain. Um, I remember doing it in the last bus was not a fun project, but it ended up working out pretty good. And we also had built everything first, then installed the ceilings, which made it even harder. Which goes to my next tip is to do the ceilings and the walls, everything, flooring, finish flooring, everything, do cover everything in and then start building cabinets. It'll make it a lot easier. You just got to make sure that you really mark where your studs are when you're securing your cabinets to your walls and doing other things like that. Um, now, that's kind of mostly what I wanted to talk about. The nitty gritty stuff that's very specific to a bus. Once you have your walls and your ceilings and your wiring is all done, your plumbing is all done, then you're just building out the layout how you chose. Um, there's definitely more videos that could be made about you know all the little different steps, but um, we have a lot of information in our tour about a lot of those things. We use diesel heaters for heat. We have mini splits in the front and in the back, which is super, super nice. Like right now we're in... Um, central northern we're in sacramento right now california and it's like 103 but the bus stays cool because we have too many splits otherwise it, it wouldn't we have friends that have one and it stays pretty warm um just going over all the little basic other things but is there any questions that anybody has that you may need some advice on while i'm right here i kind of just wanted to go over the basic um how to get your bus started in this live stream try to give a lot of knowledge and information about that any questions robin says thanks matt no no handy and would never not handy and would never take on this project but fascinating yeah i don't blame you i don't blame you it is a huge project um it's a massive project story knows seek life elsewhere knows um and big or bus big Buford knows too. It's a big project, but for someone who's looking to do it, it's uh, super rewarding. Okay. Uh, Destiny says, seek life elsewhere. When you ran the electrical rough in, did you run it above the windows and drill holes through the beams under the windows or drill holes through the beams under the windows? Um, Yeah, for sure, Robin. Uh, sorry, let me answer this question. So, on our rough in, I have some photos, and I also have your email. I can send them to you. I don't think I. Let me see. Actually, do I have a photo of that I can throw in here? Um, for the windows. So, actually, I do have a picture to show you, which would be really useful. Let me see. Right here in my folder. I just need to pull it up real quick. Give me one second. Um. There are channels going horizontally in your bus, 
where we ran most of the electrical and then would drop it down. I'm just trying to find the right picture for this. I had it somewhere. Oh, there we go. This is a good one. Is this it? Yes, this will show it to you. Boom. It's going to be super huge. Hang in there. Um, yes, and James is right. Both depends on where it was going. Um, I will show you where most of our electrical is ran through. So if you look, I don't have like a pointer, but do you see those pieces of wood that are running like the same direction as the ceiling is? There's these, uh, they're like one by or two by twos, and there's a little gap in the middle. They're right above the windows. Those are my electrical channels per se. So um, let me use my hand. This thing right here, right where my finger is going. Right there, yep. So those are two little studs that then allow channel to run through like this, kind of running through, and then it drops down from there where it's needed. So uh, long story short, most of my electrical didn't go through random spots. It's all like right up here. Hold on, let me turn that off real quick. So I know it's kind of hard to tell this whole piece of wood right here is just a panel covering all my electrical that's running through this gap. Um, I wish I could show you else. Wait, oh, maybe I can use my webcam. Uh, anyways, I can't really do it, but there's a panel right up here. Or actually, my friend Jeff is here. We have a live audience, and he can move the camera. He's getting up now. He's been working on his computer, hanging out. Um, so yeah, right up here, we got a camera operator and everything, guys. This is getting super professional. So this board right up here, you can see this gap right here. There's two screws. Well, there's screws along this that's securing this board to the channel. So if I ever need to access the electrical system, I can literally just take it off. And yes, we are pro streamers. Yes, Shanti May. What you need my help with? Shanti needs me to come. Can you give me five minutes, baby? With what? With the TV? Okay. I'll be there in just a second. Thank you, Jeff. So Jeff is our good friend who he does live streaming as well. And we're staying we're mooch stalking, which is a term. Jeff, now you gotta go in, you gotta like poke your head in front of the camera. He's coming. He's coming. Nope, nope, you weren't in it all the way. Come on. <laughs> Guys, that's Jeff. We're mooch docking on the side of his house right now, uh, which is an awesome term. Uh, <laughs> my friend, uh, Story says, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, so, yes, we're mooch docking at Jeff's house right now, and he actually does live streaming professionally, and so do I. So it's been fun. We was like, He was like, yeah, we're coming to do this live stream, and um, Robin Stanley says, hey, Jeff, good to see you. Jeff says, hey, Mary, how can I get the recipe for the bread you made? <laughs> Mary, I will actually uh, um, did you, comment real quick again. Did you comment on the video asking for the recipe? If you did, I will get Erica to uh, – it's, it's just online that she found this recipe and sent it over. Um but Destiny, real quick, okay, Mary, I'll have her reply to your comment with the recipe. Super awesome. Um, Destiny, any other questions? Or did I answer your question that you asked about running the electrical? Um, I hope I did. If I didn't, I can give a little bit more of an explanation. Um, yes, Shanti? Okay, I'll be there in just a minute, baby. Um yeah, the recipe is it's super easy making that stovetop bread. Now we're talking about bread, not buses. Sorry, guys. Um, let me get back on topic. <laughs> now Jeff is commenting on the live stream, although he could just talk on the mic. It's totally optional. Um, okay, Destiny asks, if you run the electrical through the studs under the windows on the ribs, does that compress them for using as... Oh, compromise them for using as studs or furniture. 
Um, so, well, actually what they do standard in homes when they're roughing in electrical is they take a spade bit, like a one inch spade bit or maybe a half inch spade bit, and they just drill right through the stud anyways. So, and the way that these studs are operating, Chauncey, give me a minute, baby. Thank you. The way that I ran the studs here on the bus along the ribs, they're just two by fours, like I said, and they're metal tapped into the, the actual metal stud. So they're not like standing like framing is in a normal house, actually supporting any weight. They're literally just pieces of wood to secure things to. They're not actually holding anything up. So yes, a hole going through it does not compromise it. Um, you can still secure anything you want to it. You just got to make sure that you're not going to shoot a nail through your electrical or something. So when you are roughing in your electrical and you're drilling through studs to, and that's, that's the, that's actually like the main reason why I like doing this channel thing. Uh, like the channel up top here, like I was telling you about is because instead of going through studs, you're just up here, which nothing is going to hit anything because they're safe inside of this little channel. Um, yeah, and actually that's a really, yeah, good. I'm glad that makes sense. And uh, Story said you can put nail plates over them or mark your wiring. That would be a super suggestion. Nail plates would be even better for sure because uh, you can't see it, but I have this, well, you can kind of see it back here, these LED lights. I shot a nail through it, and there's a discoloration in one spot. So, hey, Shanti needs my help with the TV. I'm going to go back there right now. And I'll be back in like a second. Chat. Sorry to keep doing this, but I'm putting on some fun music and a countdown. I'll be back in a minute. compromise i said hey just come on to the stream shanti i need more watch time and you help with that she said okay yeah i'll come help the channel i'm just kidding <laughs> um boots and cats and boots and cats i used to do that all the time growing up story um cool any other questions i would love to answer them if there's not any uh more specific questions i'm going to stop neglecting my daughter and uh <laughs> a tender maybe make some noodles oh no we already had pancakes yeah. you want dinner no i want to have go to the stream with me oh you want to go on you want to go on the live stream with me well we're on it say hi hi <laughs> cool all right guys i think that's about it thank you story I'm glad it was a good show. I hope that, uh, well, you already know mostly everything I was talking about, I'm sure. But I'm hope that the people who tuned in, huh? Daddy, what? I want to go to the thing just go. Okay. Well, you're about to talk on the mic here really soon. I'm wrapping it up right now. I'm saying goodbye. So, guys, I hope that this was helpful. Destiny, absolutely. Any advice you need, just reach out again. Um hopefully that this can help you guys and anybody else i know it's an hour long live stream so thanks for hanging in there and just chilling talking looking at this girl a bunch going crazy but it was fun guys so any other questions you have feel free to email me at their happy trails at gmail.com love to answer any questions and uh with that we're tuning off bye everybody bye robin and mary i'll get erica to send you that recipe See you later.